to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. I'm very happy to have back on the program Chris Flisher. He's an astrologer and an artist, and today we'll be talking about his mandala art, which is um, very beautiful. Here is a um, copy of one of his hand-drawn mandala images. What is it about the mandala that is so captivating for people? Well, I think for me personally, it, I mean, it, it goes in ties into my love of astrology, but there's something about the, I think, the maternal quality of the circle. Uh -huh. I think the circle is very much like a womb. It's, got, right. it's, a, it's a soft container. It's not hard-edged. And as a result of that, I think it has um, redeeming qualities, and of course, there's, there's a certain divine logic in this as well. I mean, there's mathematics involved, there's angles, there's degrees. and. It's, it's, they're used as meditation tools. You know, people stare uh -huh. at them as, as a focal point for meditation. What do you think of the crop circles? They seem to be. Yeah, they're yeah, fascinating. Yeah, what, what do you think Absolutely about fascinating. that? Absolutely fascinating. I am totally entranced by Me that. Me too. They, there's a great person out there named Freddie Silva who's done a lot of work with yeah, them. What does he say about them? Well, they, they, are, they are considered to be al algorithms of electrical energy from inside the earth that actually create heat, which uh -huh. creates things to fall over in these mathematical patterns, uh -huh. which really speaks to the logic of all this stuff that we've been talking about. I mean, this really shows that there is an actual mathematical scientific explanation for much of what we're seeing. And to have that precision in, in those crop circles is phenomenal. So how does your work relate to the, a, a similar Same kind thing. Of, well, yeah. I think, you know, I mean, I sort of, I use it as a, as a meditative tool because when I'm in the midst of creating one, I'm in a very meditative state. Mm -hmm. So it's very therapeutic for that because when your hands are moving, your mind is not, as, you know, you're, you're sort of focused in something other than your daily chatter. You know, you're not worried about the laundry list or the la whatever you're doing. You're not in that same realm of your, and so as a result, they become very soothing and very ser therapeutic creating them. Mm -hmm. And then of course, staring at them as well. It's Looking nice. at them, doing a meditation with them. Yes, they are good for that. It, yeah, because in a way, the world is a mandala, isn't it? Well, it's a giant circle. We are in a giant circle. We're on a giant ball going through mm -hmm. space. But that's also how we see. I mean, we don't really see in frames like the way pictures are framed. We see, like, as we look out in vision, we well, look yeah, at... Well, yeah, we see it. We look in peripheral. Our, our view is not square. It's peripheral. It's round, in yeah. a way. Yes, yeah, very uh -huh. much so. So really, when we look at a mandala, it's more... Uh, I think it's more germane to how we are as human beings and what we actually see, for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. And astrology charts are mandalas in Absolutely, a way. Yeah. How, and do you ever draw the... I'd use them as baselines. So sometimes when I'm looking for a theme for uh, a mandala, when, I was, mm. when I'm drawing them, I would look to the date and to see where the planets are and maybe derive... For example, I did one called uh, Eclipsipalian, in which I do, drew it on the day of an eclipse. It was a solar eclipse, and so I drew it, and I just imbued it with that kind of energy. That uh -huh. was sort of my own personal take on it. Uh -huh. But it was something I would work with. Or I'd work with a number, so working with numerology also is important, too, for that same reason. How do you work with a number in terms of Well, say, for example, um, if I would pick out a number for a day, supposing it was uh -huh. the ninth of, of any month, and I decided I wanted to use nine uh -huh. as my number, I would have nine points on the outside of it, which would be 40 degrees apart, or oh, eight, or 12, or whatever. Uh -huh. So you also call spirit in art. Why, what's the spirit? The spirit in art, I think it comes more from the fact that, to me, the, the creation of art in general is a report of the soul. It's sort Wait, of like Let me take that on. in. Creation, creativity is report of is the soul. Is a report of the soul. Report. A, sort of like a... The soul a, coming out. An expression, out, yes. An yeah. expression of the soul. So our creativity is an expression of the soul. Okay, right. no, I love that. Yeah, Thank so you. it's a uh, report. Yeah. When I mean report, it's like, you know, like when you're in elementary school and you're doing a report. Because it also bypasses the intellectual mind, right. the thinking it mind. it becomes pure, and it's not, yeah. you know, it becomes so a more of a reflection of that. So art, color, is a pure expression of the soul itself. Yes, absolutely, yes. And when we look at something, it's as if your soul is communicating with my soul. Right. Right, or if there's a, if there's a if there's some sort of message in anybody's artwork, not mine necessarily, anybody's artwork, that energy is then comes out through that. I was in Amsterdam a couple of years ago. I went to the Van Gogh Museum, and seeing those paintings live uh -huh. is incredibly different than seeing them in a, in a book be, because the, they're so visceral. The paint is jumping off the. I mean, they you, you almost start crying. I had a lump in my throat looking at them because really? I know this man was so tortured. You could almost see the torture wow. in the painting. So I think that. In that regard, 
this sense of uh, this report of the soul really was that. I mean, that was his reflection of what was going on inside him. Mm. I think that's what these... That was these the way things. that he could express his torture. Sometimes his you spine. have to get this stuff out of you. And he couldn't, you can't talk about that because it's beyond words, so you have to do an action. Yes, I mean, I, music is the same way. A, a person yeah. creates a piece of music as a form of expression. I think expression encompasses all the arts. It's not just written. You know, so it could be any form of expression. Singing. Singing, uh, dancing, uh, dancing, whatever, yeah. acting. They're all expressions of the soul. So the, the mm -hmm. spirit in art for me was a, it was a therapeutic tool that I used for myself and have used all of my life. Uh, I learned about them when I was very young. I was staring at a wall and I saw mandalas when I was about 18 or 20 years old. And the, the theme has stuck with me uh, all these years and I've always been fascinated because I studied architecture. Mm -hmm. So the degrees and the angles all have a common mm -hmm. sense of sacred geometry, like logic for me. But I really, uh, yeah, I mean, I get that. And I get mm -hmm. the kind of piece looking at some of right. these um, structures. But the, the expression of the soul I really like because I've been writing about that and it's like, I'm also trying to understand how we can bypass the mind, the, the analytical mind that wants to get in the way of everything. And there's something about art and expression that is not about analysis. I think the key word there is honesty and purity yeah. and being genuine. You know, so, so if you're alone in a room, you're not worried about being judged by anybody or mm -hmm. being self-conscious. You have the ability to create. Why do people sing in the shower? Because they know no one's going to be listening. And it's that same sort of quality. Why do people keep diaries? You know, yeah. they, they can be completely honest with that sign uh, in that time. So, yeah. I mean, how were you honest? Like, in, do you feel more honest in your I did form? at the time I was created him. And when I look at them, I feel as if I'm, I'm more engaged because I saw you know I love the color I love the angles I love the degrees there was a sense of of peace that came through so that peace is that kind of honest expression yes it's pure it's uh -huh. genuine it's, it's un unfettered there's nothing mm -hmm. guiding me anyway it's not mm -hmm. it's not as if you're trying to make a new car or design a, a microwave or something like that you're not designing a product you're you're expressing here it's a much different mm -hmm. process and do you feel like it came out I know your wife died early did something get sparked in your soul well I mean as I said to you earlier I've always been involved in architecture and drawing and stuff yeah. like that so that's always been there I turned to them in a very big way after that. You turned to mandalas. I turned to them more so. When you after your wife yeah. died. And what did that do for you? Um, it sort of allowed me to stop thinking uh -huh. uh, and to process things in a much different way. I think it was slowing down the mind. Um, and there's something about that, you know, there's a connection from the brain down the arm to the pen or the paintbrush uh -huh. in your hand, that sort of mechanical fluid structure of drawing mm. that engages the mind. And oftentimes it allows you to, it frees up your mind. And it's sort of like, I think of the mind as called like a giant hard uh -huh. drive and there's all this activity in there, but you've got to, you know, get some of that information mm. out mm. so that you have more room. So you're able to express your grief in a way. Absolutely, And, and yeah. also just express, huh? Express. And so, was, and that helped you get through that hard time. Do you feel it like was an aid? It was one of many aids, right? That right. I used, yeah, huh. absolutely. And and do you teach this now? I do. What, yeah. what do you do? How do you? I do? sort of go through the process of teaching people how to do it. It's it's uh, how to do a mandala. Yeah, how to draw one, right? Uh, how to, how to would you tell me? Would you tell me? Yeah, uh, like you got a couple hours. <laughs> well, yeah, no, just kind of. I mean, you, you want to start out with a circle. I think that's the most important. Okay. So you start out with a circle, and then you decide what you want to be in that circle. But when you start out with a circle and you're teaching. Do you have people relate to the circle? Like I do. I like to get them into a place in time and say, think about what you're going to create. What is there an energy that you want to bring into this? Is there a theme that you want to bring into? Is there a person that you want to relate mm -hmm. to? Is there something that, some sort of underlying meaningful, uh, you know, mm -hmm. touchstone that they can latch onto that allows them to have a significance? So you want the artwork to be significant. Uh -huh. um, I think. I mean, just as a, as a, as a, as a, as a set of intentions. You as sort a of, therapy as well. As a therapy. I mean, in that case, I mean, you can draw for the mm -hmm. fun of it, mm -hmm. but I think it's more meaningful if you've got something that has a resonance to it and depth. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something so magical about a circle, right? I, yeah, mean, I it's, think so, It's yeah. infinite, yet it's contained. It expands evenly. You yeah, know. I mean, I, I think it stimulates these uh, soul memories in us, the circle. You know, the sun is a circle, the moon's a circle when it's full. And, and there's also also, the, the, the whole theory of cycles is interesting. Right. That too. So you have circles of friends, you've got cycles of seasons, you've got cycles of, of circles of, of, you know, of countries. 
And all of these things, I think, have an evolutionary process to them that is cyclical, like the day the sun rises and sets, mm -hmm. the moon goes around the zodiac. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, these themes are resonant, I think, and they so represent the circle as well. So the circle then has a kind of deep archetypal impact I believe on our psyche. Absolutely, yes. So uh, the astrology wheel, the right. zodiac, exactly. is a circle. Right. So when we put things in the circle, we're containing them, looking at them. What, well, what? that's something I've tried to do with myself. I try to bring in cross-cultural uh, elements into the circle because it sort of, it, 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 it asks them to get along, you know? I mean, if I put a Jewish star in with an Om symbol, I'm saying, okay, guys, you've got to learn to get along because you're in my artwork. You know, you're sort of introducing the idea of tolerance and and uh, acceptance in that. And as the artist, you want to make harmony between I want to make harmony, yeah. So you bring in nice colors, you bring in colorful angles and designs that make that appealing, visually appealing, hopefully. Um, and I think the color is a major piece of that because mm -hmm. color is really enlivening. It has great quality to it. Well, you know what's so amazing about the creative process? I mean, you do it, you paint, you do, you even write, but then there's like a, an inner peace that comes, like a satisfaction when things are just right, and you can't explain why they're just right, they just are just right. Yeah, that's interesting, and, and there are certain signs that are more in, in tune with that. I think, you know, interestingly enough, I notice a lot of different signs. Like, what do you mean by signs? Astro Astrology. Oh. Yeah, and certain people are more prone to it. I think I, are, are more, you prone know. Prone to? Well, that, like some of the qualities you just mentioned, that certain, that comfort of the design, the uh -huh. comfort of the way things are lined up. You know, you see that's a very Virgo-like quality, Is it? for example. I think it's also yeah. Aquarian. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's, the, there's much more for that quality as well, too. But what signs wouldn't it be like? Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't exclude anybody because I mean right. people would I just say that in my observation of people that I've taught there's right. thing, it's always tends to be a strong character towards that because people have a more of a it's more of a, an indicator of that sign but I don't want to exclude anybody from doing them or you know presuppose that anybody can't right. do them but maybe Capricorns have a harder time with well maybe that. They, yeah I mean that's a good they may be out they're out building barns and stuff because right. they are you know move, you know building skyscrapers that's but what would you say more do. the water signs are more at peace with well, the well um, that's a good thing because there's more of an intuitive level there. Right. There's more of a sensitivity. There's that more of a flow, right? It's well, more more of a flow for sure. There's a feeling attached to it's that. It's interesting if we did a survey of artists, what artists and what types of artists would be what signs. And I mean, yeah, I think that would be. I mean, and there is work on that, and there people have written about that. And there's mm. certainly a propensity towards certain signs to do certain things. But you know, aside from that, the 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 quality that 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 sense of comfort that comes from it was very inherent in my life. It was something to get up and look forward to doing. Um, you know, I'd work late into the hours at night on one, and I'd let the paints dry, and then I'd get up in the morning, I couldn't wait to get back to them, you know, to start right. again. So it became very much of a, you know, real something to latch on to, you know. And you sort of, in a way, do it for yourself first. Absolutely. That was my purpose. It wasn't for any... It wasn't for showing and No, just it was like just for me to... To, to, to be a release, you know, a, 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 a way for me to express and a way for me to cope and a way for me to put myself, my use, my action into something positive. Because mm. I wanted them to be positive. I mean, at the end of the day, they wanted them to have a sense of, of hope. You know, that's the one word I would say comes out of it is the idea of hope and tolerance. Uh -huh. You know, this is really a, a cross-cultural cross-generational um, theme that brings people together. That you know, One dollars in general. I think so. That brings about harmony. Well, know. they're in every religion. I mean, it's every, every well, ethnic culture. The culture's idea of the happen. circle is in many things, yeah. yes. Of every, in every, it seems I mean, to be there, everywhere. There's a, there's, a, there's a resonance there that goes through all. I mean, the 12 disciples, the 12 seasons, the, right. you know, there's, the, the number just goes on and on for that sort of relationship. But I am interested in this relationship between art and the soul and the creativity yeah, that's and, a good that's, one. and satisfaction. And I think that, the, you know, um, people are, are, are driven to create. You know, and I think that a lot of creativity comes from crisis. I think that it is a, mm -hmm. almost like a, a, a triggering event, getting, you know, that, using that word trigger, yeah, yeah. as a, something that allows you to do that. You know, people... If, if things are too comfortable in people's lives, they don't tend to move. It's, when you look at the people in the world who have made the most difference, mm -hmm. it's people who have lived through diverse adversity and diversity. And so as a result of living through mm -hmm. adversity, you become tougher. That which doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's right. sort of that theme, you know, mm -hmm. that sense of continuity and being able to rise to the occasion. It builds character, allows you to be more resilient, adaptive to what life can throw you away. Because life is difficult. Right. But don't you think humans in general are creative, expressive, 
be. I do think so, I but mean, I think that they not everybody chooses to do that. Some people are are afraid of that. Yeah, and, and it's I'm, what the I'm saying, fear that stops them. And I'm from saying being that, that, that this is a point in time where you know, need not be afraid. There really is no rules. You can be creative in any way you want to. Mm -hmm. I think if people took the time to do that, they would be it would be therapeutic. Well, you know, what I want to talk to, and as far as that is what we didn't mention in the last show is um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs as it relates to art, because you know the first our right. basic needs in this culture are, are taken care of. You know, right. most people have food, shelter, you know, and um, clothing. clothing. And then on the hierarchy of needs, what comes next? What comes after that? Well, you know, you'd have to look at higher right, that the Maslow's hierarchy, but it really is a deepening of our intellectual capacities, a right. deepening of our awareness of each other, a deepening of our intuition, a deepening of sensitivity to each other. It's sort of a, you know, I mean, it's, it's sort of on our way towards ascension. You're looking towards... Right getting to be complete. And but I, where's art come in within those, in, in that, in, in those hierarchies? Well, I mean, it's an expression. So, you know, it's man ex making an expression. You look at cave paintings. I mean, that was an expression of some sort. That was art, you know, and yeah. it's all part of the same process. It's yeah. a manifestation yeah. of that kind of uh, mm -hmm. underlying theme. Mm -hmm. I think any time human beings are expressive by nature, and it's a reflective kind of quality. You know, you, we, we are having a conversation. Your responses are predicated by what I say and mine are by yours and they have that interchange that right. has a natural flow and rhythm to it that is part of what it means to be human it's that interchange and so when you're doing that same sort of conversation with art you're having a similar kind of conversation so when you're doing art or creating you are having a conversation in a sense with your own soul is what you would I say. I think that's good. You're listening to it and you're letting it be free and expressive mm -hmm. and you're letting your you're sort of you know, I always say, if you could, you know, I, this is an unusual analogy, but if you could put a camera down your throat and you look at your soul and you're in there like, wow, here is the word that's coming out. You know, it's yeah. kind of like that expression. And you were talking about on the way to ascension. How do you define ascension? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question. I'll tell you how I define it. Yeah, you, yeah. I, I, I think it's, it's becoming uh, at one with yourself. It's a, it's a sense of acceptance. It's mm -hmm. a sense of you know, time and place for sure and, the, and being fully in the now mm -hmm. and not, being do, you know, not be, having to think of the future or the past, mm -hmm. trying to be in that moment. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain astrological configuration that would um, define those qualities would you say? Well, I think that what I would argue is that everybody is born with a series of assets and a series of liabilities in every right. chart. There's there's the challenges and the gifts. Every hand's a winner, every hand's a loser. Right, yeah, and yeah. so then you, you, it's your ability to mitigate those challenges and make them turn your challenges into assets, turn your liabilities into assets. So sort of playing off your abilities, mm -hmm. your assets, mm -hmm but working on your liabilities. And, and, and that's what we're doing. I, I feel this is a time of ascension. This is a time where we're activating some latent, un, um, unused part of our brains that will then connect to our divine uh, purpose. I think so. There's a, yeah. there's a certainly, if, if you look at astrology as a roadmap, yes. sort of like your instructions, yes. um, your purpose is there. Your purpose is to do what you're doing. My purpose is to do what I'm doing. Everybody has a purpose. And I think some people get lost along the way, and it's good to have that guidance. Mm -hmm. So I, you could tell so you could tell someone if they are lost. This is you, this uh, would People be. come to me who typically are lost. Uh -huh. As an astrologer, they come to me, and I would use a combination of different things to help them working with the astrology, uh -huh. finding your assets, working with the artwork as a way of expression. Oftentimes people are very confused, very filled up with information, and the artwork becomes an escape valve. It becomes a way of relieving the pressure. It becomes, you know, sort of a way of expression, much the way journaling does for people. You know, you get up and you do the morning pages or journal or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way of relieving that. And, and making the mind fresh. It's kind of like the kitty litter box, you know? You're, you're tiny, <laughs> Clean the kitty litter. You know, you're, you're, you're just sort of, you're, you're sweeping the cobwebs out of your brain. You're bringing new energy into it. You're allowing yourself to look at life differently. Hmm. All so of which are constructive, optimistic, forward-thinking methods. Yeah, I think there is something hardwired in us as human beings for expression and creativity and art. I think our, our basic destiny is... Uh, is is already beyond survival. I mean, it doesn't it didn't seem that way in the 20th century or in all the centuries before. But if we can just harness the power 
of the collective that we have now, everyone could be an artist. Absolutely, and it's, it's becoming that way because you know, in some just through the virtue of the digital world, people are becoming more involved in that way. They are being more expressive. You don't have to be you know, a graphic designer to be mm -hmm. to do graphics any longer. You don't have to go to a studio to record an album. You can record an album in, in, in you know in Garage Band yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So. Because these tools are becoming more common, people, and because the times are such that we are able to do more of that, we're able to bring more of that into our lives. Mm. So let's take this art. I mean, what, what would you say people can use this? I mean, moving forward with your astrology and your art and the planetary situations and this time of a transformation, uh, What's the, what do you see in the future? What's your highest? What I would see yeah. as a result of the manifestation, if, if people were able to put their energy into art as opposed to yes. war, for yes. example, so, you know, if you have to express, if war is an expression, when we turn that money, if we turn that, exp that energy into art, it would be a much softening, more uh, provocative and ev evolutionary form of, of righteousness. I mean, you're not if, you were not, if we were not warring, if we were making art, be much better. For example, I'm in an embassy uh, in the U.S., uh, something called U.S. Art and Embassies, and my artwork is in an embassy in Africa, a U.S. embassy. There, so the United States government paid mm. me to put my artwork in oh, nice. an African embassy, which is much better than invading a foreign country, if you think <laughs> about it. I mean, you're using art as an ambassador uh, as opposed to you know, charging in and blowing up buildings. And I would see that things, as we go forward, I would see that we're entering into a, an age of of a softening of human emotions where we're not that hard edge, where we become more inclusive as time goes on. It's a very long process, I think, though. What's a long process? This process. The evolution of, yeah. of people becoming more accepting of each other, you know, a blending of, mm -hmm. of, of philosophies. But I do think the internet has made us a global village. Absolutely, yeah. Know. I mean, we're, we're talking as a result of that. You know, we are direct re respondents of mm -hmm. that. And it does knock down barriers. And, you know, people become closer, and there's a, homo you know, like a homogenization of, of cultures. Yeah. I do think the planet's in for some huge shifts in a good way. I think I the too. old structures, like we said about what, they, what we see in astrology. Traditional religions, I think. Not that I have anything against them. I, think I have something against them because yeah. I think they really limit people's creativity. They limit oh, I, I would agree with you there, but I was saying yeah. I would never you know, judge someone based on what their beliefs are. Well, I don't judge them, but I think, I think it's a do. very limited way of looking at the world is through the religious lens. Yeah, because you know what it removes? It removes intellect. They, people do not think when they are involved in that because they turn all the responsibility over to some sort of higher power. Whereas if you use your mind and you're intellectual about it and you process your, your situation yeah. intellectually, it's much more of a challenge. It's more of a challenge, but also to know that the spirit, the essence of who we are, is not out there in some right. dogmatic God, but it's in here. It's in here. And that's the reorientation towards religion from Absolutely. the outer to the inner. So was that your definition of ascension? Well, my, thank you for asking. My <laughs> definition of ascension, the most extreme, is to actually turn our bodies into light, to activate the biophotonic capabilities when within each of our cells mm -hmm. and light up to actually ascend to to lift the body. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. I, I understand and, that completely. And I don't know if that's, I haven't seen that, but I know it's possible. I think it's possible. I think it's a question of uh, mind over matter. I think the mind is capable of many things through mm -hmm. some process that we have yet to determine, yeah. but I think that the potential is there. Again, it's about potential. So if we're living in a cardinal time where the, those types of events become real, the potential, this is what I was saying, the potential is there for that to happen, because you, without yeah. the potential... Mm -hmm. But it's also a shift in consciousness. I mean, that just doesn't happen. No. I mean, the potential, like you're saying, we have to think differently. We have to think differently about who we are. We have to release the dogmas right. that have, in a way, chained us um, Very to, much so. Very to much so. depend on things like religion or yeah or governments, or, or structures, institutions that have limited us. Even look at medicine, healthcare. I mean, the alternative therapies are a lot more effective in some cases, mm -hmm. you know, in some cases they aren't, but in some cases yeah, they are. It's very true, and we are sort of bound by that, and that is, I think, part of the shift, is, mm -hmm. is, is, is opening up into new realities. Again, coming back to Thank the you. idea. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. <laughs> coming back to the idea of, of different things happening. I mean, it really does come down to how we approach life differently. We, for too long, I use the analogy oftentimes of looking through a prism. So you're looking through a prism, and if you were to turn it and you see a series of colors, you turn that prism one degree and the colors shift. Right. Like a, um, uh, what do you call those things? Kaleidoscope. Um, yeah, right. 
the color, so, the patterns change. But so I'm interested in how we can start to think differently while using some of your tools, like astrology and art. I mean, I, I want to understand and, and sort of communicate to people um, the structures of consciousness, how they're shifting to new realities, how we are taking the world, like art is a way of bypassing the intellect. But then again, we don't want to throw out the intellect in the case of religion. So there's a new dynamics of all these elements that are coming into play. I mean, these are just questions to play with. I mean, well, I mean just this mere fact that we're having this conversation is good because mm. it shows that we're bringing the, to the dialogue to the table. We're bringing the dialogue, to, we're raising the dialogue to a point where people start to think this way and they don't necessarily default back to the religion or the mm. church or the, the fundamental things that they've been bound by. They, they have to default to, to the, themselves, you know? Ultimately, ultimately. That is the secret. You but cannot find it anywhere else. That goes into art. You yes. know, no one's going to tell you how to do art. This right. is, this is um, Chris's book called The um, Mandala Spirit and Art. Yeah. So, so that's a good point. I like the yeah. way you said that because it really does come down to that. You know, we can look elsewhere for these things. You can look to your churches and your governments and your organizations, your groups that you belong to, but ultimately the truth is right inside and you can't find it anywhere else. And that's, this is, in a way, this is the new religion. The truth is inside right. and the, uh, I think William Blake said the, the yes. human being is the art. The imagination is the human being. So the truth is inside and the artist is inside and the creative force is inside and and our destiny to ascension, in a way, is, is inside of us. Well, I think it's, it's a process we have to get there. It certainly are on our way. I think we've turned the corner, which I think is a big thing. When you say that, what do you mean? What, the corner of the... Well, meaning that we're on a much different path than we were four years ago. I mean, just the fact that we turned that... I think I see that as a really pivotal moment. What was, what was the, the election? You know, oh, just, oh, just because okay. of, a, of who the United States is and what that person represents and the fact that we're in... You know, it's a totally different kind of environment. It's still contentious, and there's all the politics right, stuff right, that goes right. with it. But the fact that we got there, just the mm -hmm. fact that we got there, is like landing on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there's even more exciting times coming. I think uh, UFOs. Yes. I mean, they're there. Wait until they show up on your doorstep. If uh, they maybe do. they're here already. <laughs> Angelic <laughs> beings, higher dimensional beings, even those. Uh, forays into science and mm -hmm. I talk about 12 dimensions. I mean, there's a lot more that science has yet to discover and this new time, this new age is all about that. I think so. I think that we're tapping, by tapping into those things, just the mere fact that you're expressing something or, or you create something, you are already on your way into tapping into that inner source. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's a vehicle. So tell people how to find you and then your art uh, and your yeah. artwork. Okay, sure. uh, my website is chrisflisher.com F-L-I-S-H-E-R chrisflisher.com. You can also get there by calling turningofthewheel.com as well will get you there. And I have a website. I have a weekly newsletter that goes out that uh, I do astrology for, and it's very accurate. If you read your read the notes that go with it, you'll understand how accurate it is. And um, I have a radio show every Saturday morning called Turning of the Wheel, which is about these topics. And, uh, and Alan, hopefully you'll come and join me on my I show. I would love to talk about some of these ideas. And we'll talk about it in greater length. It's just throwing out the possibilities of what's happening. Anyway, yeah. you should wrap up. But thanks, Thank Chris. Thank you very much. I really I, appreciate it coming I on. enjoyed your art and your astrology. Good. and the mandalas. This is Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. Thanks